The classic Sonic games are not only some of my favorite games of all time, but also some of the most re-released games of all time. The original Sonic the Hedgehog for the Genesis alone has over 22 ports across multiple consoles and other systems with way to play this game. Now, this leads many of you to probably think that Sonic Origins is just a quick cash grab, <coughs> $40 with the newest way to play these retro titles. But in reality, you'd be wrong. It's the newest collection of all the classic games containing Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic CD, and Sonic 3 and & Knuckles. And I know I'm about two weeks late when it comes to new Sonic content, but regardless, most re-releases of some of these games are undoubtedly the most replayed by Sonic fans. So with Origins out now, this is probably gonna be the sixth time now that I've bought or played a version of these classic games. So with a brand new way to play these games once more, should everybody be acting like it's the second coming of Christ, or should we dismiss it? However, what I mainly think about is how faithful is Sonic Origins to the classics, and how much impact does it have on the series itself? If there's something that Sonic Origins gets right, it's from the get-go, they know how to excite the player and get them enticed to want to play. Almost immediately as the game is booted up, we see a large barrage of beautifully animated cutscenes with them displaying the title of Sonic Origins. In the menu, there are six menu choices each having their own respective 3D island or landscape to show a whole new angle for what each game is being about, like Sonic CD having a 3D island with Little Planet, or Sonic 3 and Knuckles having an angel island on the floor or in the sky, and actually having a few of these maps be interchangeable. The backgrounds themselves have little 3D models of the characters themselves having a blast and doing whatever. And the best part about all this is that if you want to see them very close up, you have to pay for a camera and very other basic features that should have already been in the game. Other than the main few modes such as Sonic 1, through 3, and Knuckles, we have two more modes like the museum and the story mode. And these will be the two main modes which I'll be getting into very shortly. When it comes to gameplay, it's a huge factor when the game itself feels good to play and to control. All of the Sonic games are no longer in the 4x3 format, but rather switch to the 16x9 format with 60fps gameplay. And all of these games are built through the retro engine, which was previously used to make products such as Sonic Mania and Sonic 1, 2, and CD's mobile ports. Now, when it comes to the game starting out, what I went for immediately was the story mode, as it's all the classic games linked up together in one long playthrough back to back while being interconnected through amazingly animated cutscenes by Tyson Hess. Just consider the Egg Shuttle of this game like from Sonic Colors. The order of the games goes Sonic 1, Sonic CD, Sonic 2, and both portions Sonic Hedgehog 3. Starting off, we have Sonic 1. And, I mean, it's, it's Sonic 1. If you don't know anything about this game, can you really call yourself a Sonic fan? The only main difference you'll notice is that instead of having lives, you'll have these things called coins. And they are collected by either getting a 1-up, or getting enough score, or in this case, they are just your replacement of lives. They can be used to buy digital collectibles in the museum. No, not NFTs. And another thing these coins can be used for is to retry a special stage in the case that you were to fail one. For Sonic 1 special stages, I'm not really the best at them, so this is a really useful feature. The game relatively stays the same apart from the final edition of the Drop Dash from Sonic Mania. Oh, and you can finally play as Knuckles, so awesome. And that's mainly it for Sonic 1. I don't really feel the need to talk about common knowledge, so let's just move to Sonic CD. Sonic CD doesn't get many changes except for another really great cutscene with Amy, and we even get to see the awesome original animated intro for Sonic CD, which I'm not gonna complain about. Also, I'm just gonna say you have the drop dash now, and it's basically the same game apart from that. Also, forewarning, make sure to switch this game's soundtrack because it's normally on the US OST, and that's a big no-no. I mean, both are good, but trust me, the Japanese one is a lot better. And if you'd like, the menu allows you to switch to Spin Dash style, as well as choose between playing Sonic and Tails. Sorry, Knuckles. Oh no! Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Mwah. A classic, really. But just like the last game, we're in a similar spot where not a lot has been changed, but the cutscene itself shows a lot more for Tails' past before Sonic. He's literally bullied by two one-tailed foxes before Sonic sees this and puts a stop to it which then falls with Tails following after him and discovering that he can use his Tails as propellers and fly. Basically showing us the origins of Sonic and Tails' friendship and this is a sight to behold. Now, when it comes to Sonic 2 itself, I don't think I need to say much. Though we do get most of the options when it comes to character selection. You can choose to play as either Sonic, Tails, or Knuckles alone, or Sonic and Tails, or Knuckles and Tails. And once more, the drop dash gets added and includes the special stages that aren't as shit thanks to the widescreen and the coin retries. And Tails can even be used to fly by looking up and jumping, just like in the mobile games or Sonic Mania. And Hidden Palace is added if you take that secret path in Mystic Caves on Act 2, so that's really cool. So I mean, yeah, it's an improvement, but hey, it's Sonic 2. Sonic 3. Sonic 3. 
Sonic the Hedgehog 3. This is something new, not the concept itself, because this was done all the way back in 2014 with a proof of concept, but a lot is different in this game because this is the first time that we officially see Sonic the Hedgehog 3 in the 16x9 format with enhanced visuals. Now, if you were playing the story mode or just the anniversary mode for this game, you can watch the Death Egg fall onto Angel Island and see how Sonic 2 interconnects with Sonic 3. And watching Robotnik make Tails and Sonic appear as the villains here are hilarious. Now, when it comes to the game itself, the first noticeable thing is the music. I mean, Sonic 3's OST has always been a mixed bag because of Michael Jackson's involvement, but this just hits a whole new level. If you're like me and are lucky enough to have the PC version, you can thankfully already just mod out the original soundtrack from 1994. But if you're one of those lucky few who bought it on a console, you're out of luck. You're gonna need to listen to these what? Rearrangements of already somewhat decent songs? It's just a downgrade for the music in general. I'm already not the biggest fan of those prototype songs, but dang, at least give me the original ones that don't remind me of Sonic 4. One neat bonus though is many of the updated sprites from both Super and Hyper Sonic have been included here. And thankfully, the Big Arms boss is still in the game regardless of what character you choose to play, which is amazing. Within Sonic Origins, we have a lot of modes to go into, so let's already get into it. Many of the modes include the following Mirror Mode, Classic Mode, Anniversary Mode, Boss Rush Mode, and Mission Mode. And the Blue Spheres mode made exclusive for Sonic 3 alone. Now, I know I went by pretty quick, but let's go into each one individually and talk about it a little bit. Starting off with Mirror Mode, it's just the same game Mirror. It can be a little bit disorienting, especially when I've memorized the way I've played these games as levels for years, but it's basically the same game, but surprisingly somewhat difficult. Classic Mode is just the way the games used to be played originally with the return of the live systems and the 4x3 gameplay. Though my main issue with it is it still has the visuals and other features from the anniversary mode in the classic mode, and it isn't just an original emulated ROM. This isn't giving an actual authentic way to play these games like they used to be. Like in Sonic 1, there's a lack of a drop dash, and not a lack of a spin dash, which really doesn't add up because the spin dash wasn't added until Sonic 2. And now, just moving towards the anniversary mode, it's a shame that the 16x9 gameplay, we can't have the live system. The coins make sense for newcomers for the Sonic series who want an easier way to get the good ending for each game, but for veterans in Sonic like myself, I think an option for the original live system should have been included. Boss Rush mode is also pretty self-explanatory. You get a barrage of all the stages and just try to beat each boss as quick as possible. And it actually has a leaderboard, so it's kind of fun to go through as fast as you can. And this also reminds me of the boss rush mode from Sonic 1 and 2's mobile ports, which actually interconnect each stage. And it's cool to have a leaderboard for this mode and the other modes like Classic, Mirror, and Anniversary, so that you can go against your friends and have a reason to do better. And lastly, the mission mode. It's actually pretty similar to Sonic Generations missions. Going through multiple stages from each game ranging in difficulty and rewarding you for more coins, the better rank you get. And I'm not gonna lie, a lot of my enjoyment came from this mode. And lastly, the museum, which was previously mentioned briefly, that allows you to go through many of Sonic's old art pieces, music, and songs, and some of your favorite movies, or I guess in this case animated cutscenes, with all the episodes of Sonic Mania Adventures and the Sonic Symphony included. And most of these digital collectibles are locked behind coins, but I think that the mission mode is a great way to stack upon coins, and just to do the better rank you get, the more coins you get. So it's a really easy process, just do the mission mode honestly if you want coins. Okay, now so for the most part, I've been keeping a somewhat positive attitude when it comes to the game. So I have a lot of negatives, honestly, with this game, so let's just get into it. When it comes to the negatives, I want to start out with Sonic Origins in its entirety. One issue that I have noticed and I hated was that in Sonic 1 and Sonic 2, there's this roll lock issue. Also, I know this was an original issue in the game, but it became a whole lot more clear to see now due to the drop dashes involvement in the game. I hope this is fixed in a future update, because if I had to play this on my Switch, for example, I don't think I'd be too happy about it. Next thing is Sonic 2. I don't know what is with Tails' AI, and this leads to a very annoying jumping noise. The next thing is in general, to be honest. I feel like the bare minimum was done for this game. Even something as simple as having a level transition with animation maybe would have been nicer, but there's not really a lot that this game improves upon other than what? The 16x9? We've had projects that have done that for years. We have Sonic 1 Forever, Sonic 2 Absolute, Sonic 3 Air. Like, come on, Sega, do better. All of these games have mod support, achievements, and more, and I just feel disappointed what is given, especially when it comes to regarding the $40 price tag. Even Sonic Mania with the Plus DLC, you're looking at about $25 price tag, a little more than half of what Origins is asking for, and Mania does so much more and actually improves upon the 2D Sonic games as standards. Even in the museum, most of the songs are not even labeled correctly. I mean, here's just another day in Knuckles Chaotix. And 
here it is in Sonic Origins. Man, that feels like a good spend $45. I feel that a lot more could have been done, and even the proof of apparently more playable characters would have been really nice. I mean, Amy's in so much of the marketing, but she's not even a playable character. And the last thing I can mention is that although it hasn't happened to me personally, I have seen so many complaints about glitches and bugs where people can't go through loops because it counts as a wall. Bosses are just messed up. I mean, heck, there was a thing where you could just skip the entire ice cap boss in Sonic 3. I mean, just overall, the price tag that is being offered is just not worth it. If I was to be asked if I would recommend this game, I would say no immediately. There are much far better ways to play these games if you are on PC. Sadly though, I will say that this is the best way to play all these games if you are on console, so that's a little disappointing. So when it comes to my final thoughts, I think it's really a matter of what you play on. The game itself works for what it's offering, and the main thing is that just the overall lack of content just giving us as fans in general and consumers a very bare minimum product. It feels very rushed or even lazy, and looking back on the past collections like Sonic Gems Collection, it offers even things such as playing games from other consoles like Sonic R or Tales Sky Patrol. Even in a game like Sonic Generations, I would have been much happier to pay a $40 price tag for. In general, it isn't a completely bad collection by any means, but with the bare minimum done, it makes it hard to support or even accept that it's offering $40. If you're on PC, these are probably the last versions of the games you'd want to play, thanks to previously mentioned fan projects which remakes these classic games in a much better fashion. I mean fuck, Sonic 3 Air alone does so much more and is the best way to play both portions of Sonic 3. It has achievements, level music selections, and the prototype music which actually will sound fine, mod support, and a remastered or emulated soundtrack, and or even have many more customizable options which makes it clearly the best version of the game to play. Sonic's classic titles in this condition should have just been released in $20 for what we got as a final result in my opinion. Hey, welcome to the end of the video guys. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe as it would be greatly appreciated. I know I'm a little bit late, but if you haven't already noticed, I've moved, so uh, yeah. Also, my other monitor broke, so I have a vertical one now, so if you guys want, feel free to join the 17 Zone 3.0 my Discord server with over 200 people where we all just chat and have fun and it's overall a great time if you're there. Links to all my other platforms such as my Twitter, Twitch, and other stuff, I guess, will be in the description down below if you want to check it out. Please guys, be better than Sonic Origins, and have a great one.